Welcome to a special Monday edition of Xerox Office Hours. I usually do these on Fridays more often than not, but occasionally I'll do it on a Thursday. Uh, usually it's an end of week sort of thing, but this one's, a, and, I, and I normally don't rehearse these videos, but this one, uh, I kind of had to do a little setup work because of what I wanted to demonstrate. So I ended up doing the setup work on Friday and I didn't get done in time to sort of actually record the video. So here we are, it's Monday. Xerox office hours. I want to talk about personalized front ends and some of the things you can do with Xerox that I don't know if most users are aware of. Uh, and I also want to talk about what a front end is. And if you can hear thunder in the background, we're getting ready to have a thunderstorm here. We'll just keep it as ambience. You might not be able to hear it by the time this gets uh, edited. Um, so I want to talk about front ends and back ends a little bit. So one of the interesting properties of Xerox, and let's this this mostly mostly this makes sense if you're thinking about like HTTP servers, but it really kind of makes sense for for any type of server that you would uh, share through Xerox. So when you think of like putting a a web server on the internet, like sticking an nginx or something like that up, um, usually it's cited. The, the, it's put on a VPS or in a container or something, and that's put where the the files or whatever the access that's necessary to reverse proxy the thing you're trying to share. That, that's kind of all cited in the same location. So one of the interesting things about Xerox is that Xerox kind of takes that server concept and splits it into a front end and a back end. And that front end and back end are separated uh, using OpenZD. So OpenZD becomes a, an overlay, a secure transport for connecting those two halves together. So we're going to talk about um, setting up front ends and specifically personalized front ends. Um, and, and we'll kind of, I'm going to kind of ramble about this a little bit, so bear with me. So what I'm talking about is uh, when you run Xerox Share, Xerox Share is creating a back end in Xerox parlance, right? So it's it's creating the the actual server for the thing. And then when you do a Xerox access, you're actually creating a network listener on on a traditional IP network. And and that listener is uh, communicating with the the Xerox share, the back end over OpenZD. And OpenZD lets those two components be distributed anywhere on the planet. So you can um, securely communicate directly between those two components in an end-to-end -end encrypted manner. Uh, with you know full zero trust and all that sort of stuff, um, and and OpenZ just sort of takes care of the the comms for that, which is very powerful. So another another let's come at, come at this from another angle. When you do a Xerox share public, let's say you're you know you're you're sharing some sort of HTTPS resource. When you do a Xerox share public, what you're actually doing is you're starting a backend through the Xerox share process. And then you're asking Xerox to provision what we refer to as the public front end for your share. So as part of the Xerox IO service, we run a Xerox access public of a public front end that knows how to uh, use host headers to send traffic to the right uh, Xerox share. So that public front end is a shared resource and that works fine in practice. So one of the things that's become an issue with Xerox as it's gotten more popular is that we've started having spammers and phishing and various, uh, you know, not so great activities starting to happen on that public front end. So we've been having to, to put some thought into how we want to handle that. And I think ultimately we're going to end up, you know, asking, asking the community, seeing what people think if you were in our shoes, how would you how would you handle this problem? So I think the the approach we're going to sort of take as a first stopgap is that we're going to uh, end up asking for a credit card number. Won't charge anything, but we're going to use a credit card verification. Oh, a bunch of thunder. Going to ask for a credit card verification to uh, allow access to the public front end. So what that means is. You can still sign up for Xerox and use it completely free and not pay anything up to the limits, not have to give us any credit card numbers, nothing like that. If you want to use private sharing, if you want to, you know, do a Xerox share public and use the shared public front end so that you get a share.xerox IO address, you're going to end up probably having to give us a credit card uh, 
again, a, a zero charge. We just kind of want to use that as a way to sort of attach some sort of identity or, or potentially limit the the spammers and phishing and all that sort of stuff. And then you can use the public front end just like you have been. I think the plan currently is also to grandfather all of the existing users that uh, have already signed up to allow them to continue to use the public front end. And then we'll, we'll deal with abuse on, on a spot basis. Um, so this change is coming, but feel free to sign up in, in the next couple of days and uh, till it, you know, I, I don't, we, I don't know exactly when this change is rolling out. It's probably within the next couple of weeks, I think. Um, so yeah, feel free to go ahead and sign up and get an account now and you won't have to worry about that. You can just have grandfathered access to the public front end as long as you're not, you know, setting up phishing sites. Um, but what I want to talk about in this office hours is something that I'm calling personalized, the personalized front end. So there's really nothing particularly special about the Xerox public front end. The only thing that's special about it is that you can do a Xerox share public and automatically seamlessly provision um, resources there, which is really handy for a lot of, you know, quick, quick jobs. But in a lot of cases, what we've been hearing is that what people really want is the ability to bring their own domain name and, uh, you know, have their own subdomains and their own naming scheme inside their own domain name and have that along with TLS and everything else point to their Xerox shares. So along with the, uh, having to give us a credit card number to access the public front end, even though we don't charge it. Coming also with that is a, we've it's I don't have a date exactly when it's coming out, but I know it's actively being worked on and it should be coming also pretty quickly within a matter of weeks, I would think, is the uh, give us a small amount of money. And I don't know how much the money, the, the amount of money will be yet, but give us a small monthly fee and we'll we'll manage a bring your own domain, um, which the current talk on the street is is also going to include support for TCP tunnels. So that means you could end up paying us a small monthly fee, have TLS, have your own your own domain name, and also have the ability to do uh, public TCP tunnel shares. So that's coming. But for the open source crowd and for anyone who just does not want to give Xerox IO and NetFoundry a credit card, there's an approach that you can use to create your own personalized front end. You can do this today. It's it's one of the superpowers of Xerox and Xerox private sharing. So I kind of wanted to talk about this real quick and uh, do a quick demo of what it what it's about. So this document kind of it isn't meant to be a how to. It's meant to be a conceptual guide about here's how these things work and how you can go ahead and set them up. And this video is also not meant to be a tutorial like here's how you actually would configure these things. I kind of am going to walk you through. I set it up just in a, in a demo capacity so you can kind of see how it works. Um, but this is about giving you the, the idea and the intuition of what you can do with this. And then it's kind of up to you whether you want to go figure out how to do it with containers or, you know, with a VPS or whatever, however you want to do it. So in a nutshell, the, the, point of the personalized front end is basically in my demo, I've, I've bought a, you know, couple dollar a month VPS instance that I'm running a, a handful of Xerox access processes on three of them. And I'm also, I've set it, I put an, I provisioned an Nginx on it and bound DNS to it and TLS using let's encrypt. So for, you know, a couple bucks a month, I can self host my own public front end that then will work completely fine with the Xerox IO free service to access my Xerox shares. That gives me a lot of control over how this is set up and what I can do with it. Uh, it doesn't that doesn't uh, in any way violate the spirit of how Xerox is supposed to be used. That's completely fine. Like we we encourage you to do that. Uh, in fact, one of the nice properties of that is there's a section at the bottom of this document called privacy. When you do a Xerox share private and a or, and a Xerox access private, the people who are running your service in instance, in the case of the public one, it's Xerox IO, but it could be a self-hosted instance. Whoever's running that has no way to know what applications you're running or what traffic you're sending. All we know is that traffic moved from a pair of uh, a front end and a back end over the OpenZD network. We don't know anything about your application or what you're what you're sharing or how you're how you're using it. So uh, that's that's due to the power of OpenZD and the end to end, end encryption and all those sorts of things. Um, so it's, it, 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 it's gives you a lot of security over what you're, you know, not that anyone's doing anything that, you know, 
bad, but it's just, you know, gives you a level of privacy. So, and, and that can be handy for security reasons and all kinds of things. But, um, so yeah, so let's, let's take a quick tour through this. So what I ended up doing was I've got a, a terminal window over here and you can see that I've got uh, a share reserved. I already, I already went ahead and did a reserved share. And in, in this document, I talk about A, B, and C as the, the, service names, the share names. I called mine demo AAA, demo BBB, and demo CCC. And I, I created those using the unique unique name of flag in, in Xerox Reserve. So that basically uh, lets me lets me name those things rather than giving them sort of a, a random name. You can use a random name. You don't have to use a reserve name. Um, that's completely fine. So I went ahead and did the reserve already. And if we go look at my console, here are the three shares. The first one is uh, demo BBB. It's a web share. Um, and then I've got uh, demo AAA, which is also a web share. And then I've got uh, demo CCC, which is a TCP tunnel share. And then I've got a uh, SOCAT process running down here that's just uh, launching exec. So it's basically a cheap and cheerful echo server. And it's listening on port 8181, which is the endpoint of my demo CCC TCP tunnel share. So and th this is all running on my development machine. So the, again, the, one of the beautiful things about Xerox is that the Xerox share and access processes can be cited wherever you want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start these up. So I'm running them in headless mode. Now you can imagine these could be set up on a, on a system somewhere using system D or as containers or however you want to, however you want to build this stuff. Um, but yeah, now I've got my three shares running. So let's go ahead and switch over to this machine. This is a VPS. So this is a VPS sitting out, and I think it's in uh, in Atlanta in the United States. And it's basically a very low-end uh, VPS. And it's got Nginx installed on it. And it's got uh, three Xerox access processes running. So if I do my jobs, I... I'm going to tear this demo server down as soon as this demo is over. Like, I'm not planning on keeping this up. It's just for demo purposes. So I'm not worried about showing you what I've, do, what I've done here. And I'm not trying to build something that's set up to be uh, well managed. I literally just did no hub and I, and I ran Xerox Access Private. These could be set up with system D or as containers or whatever you want to run these three Xerox access privates. But I, you can see that what I've done is I've bound the uh, addresses to loop back for the two web shares. So demo AAA and demo BBB. And then for demo CCC, which is the TCP tunnel share, I bound it to all interfaces on port 8181, which means it's bound to the public IP address of this VPS. So what that, and I already went ahead and I set up a DNS for these things also. So I can do curl or not curl, netcat uh, demo ccc.quigley.com, which is my domain name on port 8181. And you can see I've got a public echo server running. Now I'm, I'm accessing it from the front end. That's irrelevant, it doesn't really matter. You can access it from anywhere. It'll work fine. It's on the actual internet at, for this demo. Um, and then let's take a look. If I go into my Etsy Nginx tree, and this is a an Ubuntu 2204 or something like that. Uh, if we go to sites available and we go to look at demo AAA, it's a pretty simple uh, SSL server. And you can see that for location root, it's proxy passing it to loopback 9191. So demo AAA is going to go to that first share. And demo BBB ends up being the same thing. Right, it's just going to a different port. It's going to 9192. Uh, and again, if we break out, oops, break out of this and we do a jobs, you can see that 9191 is demo AA, 9192 is demo BBB, right? So the long and the short of that is uh, I can go to demo aaa.quigley.com and I've got access to my Xerox share. So that was a matter of Installing a VPS, running a Xerox Access Private, sticking an Nginx in front of it, configuring Let's Encrypt, and that's pretty much it. Setting up some DNS, like it, it, it didn't take very long to do. It's a, uh, it's probably the simplest thing you could self-host for Xerox. Uh, you know, it doesn't require anything complicated like setting up OpenZD or anything like that. It's, it's, it's well within the reach of most self-hosters these days, I would think. So, but this is a you know, access to, and this, I think the, uh, it looks like one of these shares, demo AAA, this is the Xerox source tree on my local drive. Um, 
And then the other one is the docs tree. So if we go to demo BBB, yeah, this is this is the docs tree. So I just set up two web shares as a quick way to, to make these things work. And if we go and look at the certificate, it's uh, not that. Connection secure, verified by Let's Encrypt. So it's all, I used CertBot to do that. Um, I'm provisioning this VPS, installing CertBot and Nginx, getting that stuff wired up. Probably took me, I don't know, the whole thing took me like an hour to set it up. It took me a little longer to sort of test and test it and work, walk through it and talk about how I wanted to, to demonstrate it. But that's it. I mean, you can do that with Xerox today. Uh, you can You can literally set up. And the nice thing about that is that still gives you all of the a lot of all of the security that you would want, all of your actual uh, resources that you'd be sharing are still completely protected behind firewalls, not accessible from the internet. They're completely secure. The front end, if it were compromised, I mean, all all anyone can do is access uh, the service through Xerox directly. I mean, it's not like they can. No one's going to be able to directly talk to your your box, your 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 environment, and sort of break into anything. It's it's. All they're all they're doing is uh, accessing OpenZD potentially, and it's the same access they're get already you'd already be getting through the front end. So, so yeah, the, the front end ends up being whether it's a VPS or containers, sort of a nice little adapter uh, that lets you um, bind your Xerox shares to the internet however you want using whatever DNS and TLS you want. I could I could run hundreds of shares. I could I could front them all with Nginx. I could run all kinds of um, you know TCP and UDP tunnels. I can do all that sort of stuff with this VPS, and the resource demands of it are very low. So, kind of wanted to have a quick video to talk about some of the stuff. Point out these new docs. Let everyone know that there are probably some changes coming with regard to the availability of public front ends. It's still going to be free. You're just basically going to having to, to give us a credit card to to sort of prove your identity, so that we can uh, you know build a level of trust to let people use the public front end. We've just had a, a high degree of of phishing and that sort of stuff. I and again, I kind of want to open that up to the. Uh, I'm thinking about how to how to go about doing this, but kind of want to talk about it with folks on the internet and see if anyone has any other ideas. Um, maybe there are things we can do with. You know, friend of a friend, trust relationships. I don't know. Um, so there's that whole conversation around what do we do to uh, not make this hugely a huge inconvenience for people that just want to use the public front end. And then on the other hand, Ross, I'm also want to let you know that the public front end is just one way to access a Xerox share. You can very easily set up a personalized front end. If you already have a VPS or something like that, you can just drop a, a Xerox access private on it and, and bind your shares and expose them to the internet pretty easily. So, um, but yeah, this document kind of walks through the same thing, the scenario in a little bit more detail, talks about using Xerox reserve to reserve the shares. Um, talks a little about Xerox access private and what it does. Um, how you might configure Nginx or, or Apache or whatever caddy, whatever you want to use as a, a reverse proxy. You could even forego the reverse proxy if you don't need it. You could literally just run Xerox Access Private or private and bind it to uh, 0000 and give it a, a port and let that be your web server. Like you don't need to use a reverse proxy. Um, that's just a handy, it's a handy facility for uh, managing TLS and terminating TLS and that kind of stuff. So so yeah, quick office hours, just kind of wanted to talk about some of this stuff. The next video I should be putting out should be the building Xerox, the, the intro video for building the, the building Xerox series that I've been talking about for a while. It's just been a little bit of a hectic, you know, first chunk of summer here and haven't, haven't gotten to that in quite the order I want. Also hoping to start really showing some of the stuff coming up for uh, Xerox 5, the new, what will eventually become the 1.0 version of Xerox. Um, some pretty cool, powerful new stuff coming there too. So yeah, uh, really appreciate you paying attention to the, this video. Um, feel free to reach out on the discourse, reach out to me personally, uh, anything I can do. We want to talk about the stuff we're, we're all here and we're happy to talk about it. So yeah, until the next video, talk to you soon.